Welcome back. Um, we are taking our hot topic this morning, and that is Atiku touted to lead opposition alliance against Tinubu ahead of 2027 election. We do know that for any any country or any political um, climate to be balanced, we have to have a very very a good opposition, not just good leadership. Good leadership comes when there is a good opposition as well. In Nigeria, we are seeing 2027 because 2023 is gone already. So we're looking at the possibility of Atiku leading the opposition uh, that will maybe change the political trajectory of Nigeria come 2027. Uh, we're Going, we are being joined right now by Nick Agule, public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Good morning and happy new year to you. Happy new year, happy new year, happy new year, happy new year to, all, uh, to you. Viewers. Okay, now we've seen, uh, we, we've already accepted our fate, as it were, mm. that 2023 is gone. Um, the the just like subsidy, subsidy <laughs> it's gone, gone as well. 2023 gone. So the election of 2023, even though some uh, governors are still in the courts and all that, but the presidency, that one is gone. Now, 2027 is what we're looking up to. And this headline says, Atiku is being touted to lead the opposition. And he has hinted that he's going to contest yet again in 2027. Let's first of all just get your thoughts on these possibilities. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not sure if it is my system, but uh, I don't seem to hear you out clearly. Uh, uh, however, I believe that you've asked me to comment on the statement by the former vice president. And if that is the case, I will say yes. I agree with him that uh, Nigeria needs a strong coalition of opposition parties to checkmate the government in power. But I don't agree with him that he should run again in 2027. I think he needs to retire. He needs to give way to other people to also come into the space. I mean, he can say, well, former President Buhari contested uh, three times uh, before he made it uh, on the fourth attempt. Uh, I think uh, former Vice President uh, has contested probably uh, four times or more. And uh, age is not on his side as well. And it's just for him to be part of that strong coalition of opposition parties, but he mustn't have to stand as a presidential candidate. Okay, but what what do you think the position should be like? This coalition, it, should it be a coalition of collapsing, uh, collapsing other structures into one or just a common understanding between the oppositions? Uh, can you come again with that? Uh, the audio what that would you very propose very uh, as a formidable uh, opposition? Power. Would you propose that they collapse all the structures of their parties into one, just like they did for the APC, bring in CPC and all, so many other parties? Or you say the parties can stay on their own but have a common understanding on how to operate as the opposition? Okay, so uh, they can, can do it either way. They can remain individual parties be working in coalition or they can collapse their uh, individual political structures and form a one united party either way it is what needs to happen i mean if you go to politics like in the uk okay. you discover that in the uk the opposition is recognized by the laws is recognized by parliament so the as if it was in the uk i will give the example with nigeria if it was in the uk as president tinubu is now 
the president of Nigeria under the banner of the APC, the second highest uh, party with members of parliament, let's say in this case, PDP came second in the last presidential election, Atiku Abubakar will also be in government. But he will be in government as an opposition leader. And as President Tinubu has a cabinet, Atiku Abubakar will have a shadow cabinet. So if President Tinubu has a minister for education, Atiku Abubakar will have a shadow minister for education. And this shadow minister is paid by government as well. You know, the, the different, however, in the UK is that you have to be elected into parliament first before you can, you know, have any of such political appointments. But Atiku Abubakar will have a shadow minister for each of President Tinubu's ministers. So that at the end of the day, when President Tinubu makes a statement, I am going to do so, so, and so for education, Atiku Abubakar, as the shadow prime minister, we also come out with his own policy statement, you know, countering that of uh, President Tinubu. So the voters have the whole time to be able to see what else they could have got from what this government, their current government, is giving them. And that puts the current government on their toes. They know that they cannot fumble, they cannot mess up, like in Nigeria now. You can see that the government is fumbling with the security situation in Nigeria. <clears throat> President Tinubu's government hasn't done anything different from President Buhari's government. In President Buhari's government, there will be a lot of Nigerians killed in their hundreds. The government will come out and make statements. <clears throat> they will visit the scene of the, the, the crisis, and that will be the end. And we wait for the next a set of 100 people to be killed. If we had the kind of opposition, political setup as it is in the UK, the shadow prime minister will be telling Nigerians what he can do to solve the insecurity problem. And Nigerians can clearly see that they are not getting the best deal from the government in power. Because here is somebody else who has a different solution that is sounding more effective in their ears. And that happens throughout the tenure until the next general election. By the next general election, the voters are clear in opposition who have offered them a better detour. So this is what needs to happen. Even if you go to the U.S., where they practice the presidential system of government that we have copied, it is the same thing. As we speak today, the Democrats are in power at the presidency. And the Republican Party is the opposition. And for the entire four years of Joe Biden's, uh, President Joe Biden's uh, tenure, the, the, the Republican Party have been checkmating him countering his policies, offering Americans a better deal. And that makes President Biden not to fumble, not to, to mess up, because if he makes any mistake, the Republican Party are going to cash in on it and appeal to the voters with a different uh, dimension. So if Nigeria democracy must work, we must allow opposition to thrive. Because it is by the opposition thriving that those who are in government are able to have sleepless nights, knowing that they are watching their backs as the opposition is going to take the game from them. So in other words, you're saying we should go into a parliamentary system of government, that that would be better for Nigeria? Did you hear me? Uh, sorry, come back again with that. Okay, so I said in other words, you're saying we should go to a parliamentary system of government. That might just be better for Nigeria because the opposition party would be checking um, the, the ruling party. So basically checks and balances. Okay, so uh, two things. The first is that we don't even need to change our political setup to the parliamentary system of government before the opposition becomes strong and violent. In the US, in the example I gave, they are practicing the presidential system of government, which we are practicing too. But they have a very strong opposition. 
So, like the Democrats are in power today, the Republicans are the opposition. Very strong opposition. Donald Trump is not sleeping. All the other Republican presidential candidates, they are offering Americans something different from what Joe Biden is offering. And so it is happening at the different states. In any state where the, 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 a Democrat is the governor, the Republican Party is the opposition and vice versa. So we don't even need to go into the parliamentary system of government to have this strong opposition. However, if you ask me that between the presidential system of government and the parliamentary system of government, which is better for Nigeria, I will say the parliamentary system of government is better for Nigeria because the parliamentary system of government, not only that it is cheaper, it is also uh, better for a, 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 a system like Nigeria, a country like Nigeria. It is better for us. And I can tell you why. First, the parliamentary system of government is cheaper because in the parliamentary system of government, it is the National Assembly members that also form the cabinet of the country. So if Nigeria were in a parliamentary system of government, it is members of the Senate or the National Assembly, as we would have had it, that would have also, some of them would have been appointed to become um, uh, ministers in government. So both the executive arm of government and the legislative arm of government are the same people. So that, that avoids all the conflict that we have these days. You see, the conflict between the executive and member of the National Assembly is as if they are pursuing different agenda, except when their self-interest is together. Secondly, it is cheaper. Like in the UK, as we speak today, the, the, they, have, uh, they have two arms of the legislature. They have the House of Commons and they have the House of Laws. So the House of Laws is more or less like, uh, you know, they are not elected, they are appointed. Um, they, they, are, they are not the real legislators representing the people. The real legislator representing people are those in the House of Commons. They are called MPs, members of parliament. And each of them will first have to win an election in their constituency to go to parliament. And it's why they are in parliament. The party that has the majority of MPs in parliament is the one that forms the government. So as we speak today, the Conservative Party haven't had the, 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 the largest number of MPs are also the government in power. And members of the conservative parties who are in parliament are also the ones that are in government. So you don't have a presidential election. You don't have a presidential election because the chairman of the party that has the highest number of MPs in parliament automatically becomes the prime minister. So the Prime Minister of the UK today, as we speak, uh, Rishik Sunak, he didn't conduct, he didn't have to win a presidential election to become Prime Minister of the UK. He only went to his constituency, made sure that he won his election as an MP, came to Parliament, and because he's the leader of the Conservative Party, and the Conservative Party has got the largest number of MPs in Parliament, that is how he has become Prime Minister. So, you see, in Nigeria, the presidential election costs a lot of money. And by the time people spend all that money, when they get into office, they now try to recoup that money, either their own money they spend, or the money that was sponsored, was given to them in sponsorship by those who were backing them. And so that's another uh, aspect of the, of the uh, 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 presidential system that makes it more expensive. And then this making official, the opposition party, like in the UK, the opposition party, like I said, they are also MPs, they are on government payroll, they are recognized as government officials. Let us have such an opposition party in Nigeria to put the leaders in Nigeria on their toes. So if you ask me, I would say the parliamentary system is a far better system of government for Nigeria than this very expensive presidential system that we have copied. And not only that we have copied the presidential system, we copied it wrongly. Because in the presidential system, the, the three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are totally independent. But as you can see in Nigeria, the legislature acts as if they are a department in the presidency. The Senate president and his counterpart in the House, the, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, they act as if they are senior special assistants to the president of Nigeria. 
the independence is gone. And of course, we know what is happening in the, uh, in the judiciary. So the, this system of government we have is not working for us at all. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 well, let's go to the crux of the matter. Opposition to be led by Atiku, uh, uh, having 2027 in mind. The basic thing is, why is opposition not as strong as it should be in Nigeria? Because you have said it's not necessary that we change uh, the political climate of Nigeria, the political system of Nigeria from presidential to uh, parliamentary before we can get things done. Why do you think the position is not uh, strong enough in Nigeria? Formidable. Yes, that is not formidable enough, that's the yeah. word to use. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't hear you very well. I just Why do you think the opposition is not as formidable as they should be in Nigeria? Okay, so the opposition is not as formidable in Nigeria as elsewhere or as we expect because of selfish interests. Our politicians love themselves too much. And let's go back to the topic we started with, Atiku Abubakar. You would have expected that Atiku Abubakar, as an elder statesman, will be calling for a strong opposition against the government of President Tinubu, if he had put full stop on that statement, he would be all right. It will be okay. It will be the right thing to say in this 2024 as we start. But he immediately put himself in the fray by saying, I am going to contest the 2027 elections. So you can see that he's not ready to give way to anybody. So how can we form a strong opposition when he must contest? He's not giving room to the Labour Party or the NMPP or any other coalition of opposition parties that will come together and will give a chance to any of them emerging as the president. So if they don't give way to each other, a house that is uh, divided against itself is going to fall. So you can't just come into a coalition because what what this statement, uh, former vice president at uh, Abaka has betrayed his his emotions. Because what he's basically calling for now, he's saying all the other parties that are not APC come together for me so that I will be your presidential candidate into the 2027 elections. I want to become president by all means. How is that going to work? It's never going to work. You know, so this is the reason why opposition is not working in Nigeria. Selfish interests of people in opposition are actually being used by the government in power. There are people in, in opposition, for instance, you see what is happening in the Labour Party, you see the crisis in the PDP and all of that. These are people in opposition parties who cannot withstand the crumbs falling from the table of the party in government. And they are now being used as internal insurrectionists to dismantle their own parties. So if we are going to have a strong opposition, Politicians must bury their selfish interests. Politicians must look at the need for Nigeria instead of their own personal need. Politicians must be ready to say, even if I don't stand as a presidential candidate or any other candidate, let Nigeria work. I am ready to sacrifice my personal ambition for Nigeria to work until we get politicians to that level opposition is not going to work in nigeria all right so um, i mean i like the fact that you just addressed um the crisis in pdp and even in nmpp the candidates were suspended and we're looking at the apapa fa um, faction in in labor party and pdp everyone has theirs so how do we even form this coalition that is going to be formidable in my mind's eye i'm just trying to understand because we know how nigerian politicians can be sometimes um their ego tries triumphs over the growth of the nation. So what is that coalition going to be like? And are you sure that they can all come together and say, we want to form this formidable opposition party that would ensure that we check whatever the ruling party is doing? So two things. The first is that, let us be very clear that when you have a coalition of human beings, in any situation at all, 
there are bound to be dissenting voices there are bound to be people who are not on the same page or wavelength with the rest there are those who will definitely have their own selfish agendas that they want to pursue there are all sorts of interests so whether it is a family even in a family a family unit uh, whether it is uh, in, in a business it is in an office is in politics is in education even in, in religion you know in, in all these places where you have human beings you cannot have 100 percent of the people in line falling in line with the vision the objectives and the aspirations of that group you are always having people who have their own agenda so that is the reality of life that is humanity for you however what matters is that a majority of the people on the same page with each other moving forward regardless of the fact that some elements in their group are falling aside if that is the answer then you can make way forward but if majority of the people are pursuing their selfish agendas then you will realize that that group is not going to function so how does this apply to the opposition party party or parties in nigeria it's the same thing a uh, labor party pdp nnpp cannot all get their members to be on the same page with their parties objectives and aspirations however if the leadership of these parties a majority of the members of these parties decide within them that it is nigeria first and their own selfish interests last they will be able to manage any other dissenting voices that are within their parties and they can form this strong and uh, indomitable uh, opposition from today because you see the, the the problem in nigeria is that we elect people like we just finished uh, a general election in 2023 instead of people to now accompany the government that is in power through the governor process of four years we basically just give up on them and begin to look to the next general election and this thing has been hurting us for so long we need to accompany the government in power through the whole four years with our own opposition and that opposition does not only uh, need to be political party opposition it also needs to be the people arm of government opposition we keep saying this thing that there are four arms of government the executive the legislature the judiciary and the people the people are the fourth arm of government and in all the countries that our young people are now being attracted to which they are jackpying to if you go there one thing you are going to notice immediately is that the people arm of government is a strong opposition to the government in power the people arm of government are accompanying those who are in power for the entire duration of their time and of course the nigerian constitution provides us the people the people arm of government the nigerian constitution provides us definite and specific responsibilities on how we can be part of the governance process for instance if the, uh, the the executive arm of government is not performing well our representatives the legislatures legislators are expected to checkmate the executive arm of government and if the legislators are not doing their work the constitution has the people arm of government the power to recall the legislators so as you can see if legislators today know that the people arm of government can begin a recall process against them in order to protect their jobs they will put more pressure on the executive arm of government to perform and of course the executive arm of government knows that at the next general election that is if they survive and they are not impeached by the uh, uh, legislative arm of government who are under pressure by the people arm of government the executive arm of government will face the voters at the next ballot and the voters will slaughter them so you can see that the people arm of government is the basic opposition unit in a democracy like the one we are practicing even before we talk about the political opposition the political party opposition so in nigeria the people arm of government because of what has happened over the years has become docile has become removed from the process disengaged our young people who form the majority block of votes 
in any election in Nigeria are no longer interested in Nigeria. They don't know anything about Nigeria. 90% of them, if you engage them, the only thing in their head is they want to jackpot. So that is where we even need to start by reversing that process of making our young people to become engaged in their country because this country we have, look, there is nowhere else. I am a diaspora. I can tell you, I can tell the young people in Nigeria for free that you jackpot with that place you are going to. Everybody knows they knows that you are a foreigner. You are a visitor. That is not your place. There is nothing like home. And if we form this strong opposition at the people level of government, we can make Nigeria even a better place than those places that are attracting us to Jakarta. Mm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> some people are saying for us to get a good opposition, we just need two parties. That many parties uh, is killing the democracy in Nigeria. We should have just two parties as we had the SDP and the NRC. This is because sometimes parties are said to be sponsored by um, uh, candidates from major political parties. They just spring up with one small party to disrupt another party and all that. So people are advocating a, a two-party system in Nigeria. Do you also buy that idea? I don't buy that idea. Uh, in Nigeria, uh, practice a two-party system under the Babangida military uh, junta. And uh, we know what happened. That was just for his own selfish interest to be able to transmute from a military dictator to a civilian president in Agbada. Mm. For me, I would rather want parties to you know, develop by themselves and have this internal uh, democracy that the practice that will lead them to becoming major parties because uh, this two-party system i'm trying to think in my head where does it exist because well, in, in the, the uk US, they have about three where they have we the, copy the... the presidential yeah in the UK, Sorry? they have about three. They have the Conservatives, which is the Tories. They also have the Labour, and then they have the Liberals. Sorry, I, I, I didn't get that. So, so when I'm talking about the UK, even though they operate a parliamentary system of government, but they have about three of them, which is the Conservative, also known as the Tories. They also have the Labour Party, and then they have the Liberal most times. So, can't we have a cap? Because we have a lot of political parties in Sometimes Nigeria. 80, a lot. And so sense. many people are buying these tickets and saying they want to contest to be president or governors or, you know, whatever political uh, position they, they, they okay. deem uh, okay. fit. Now, but this, can't this, we have a cap on the political parties that we have in Nigeria? It is even five. And we know that, okay, you have to just align with one of these parties. And, and, and sorry, let me just add this. Mind you, um, most of the time, we don't even know what the, the, the goal of each party is, what they really stand for. So, for instance, if we have about five political parties, I can say, oh, I can align with this. Whatever goal they have, whatever um, principles that they've laid out, I can align with them. Hello, Mr. Nick, are you there? I think we just lost him. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, so, for instance, you know, you have PDP. And PDP says, this is my mandate. These are the things I stand for. Um, I can say I want to align with PDP because, you know, that's what they stand for. And they go with my own um, principles as well. Just like how you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. There, there are two divert, uh, um, diverse principles. So it's easier for me to say this is who I want to align with. If we have about five political parties in Nigeria, I can easily say I want to align with this party. I think this party would you know, transform Nigeria. Another person can say I want to align with this other party. This party is, is it for me. But do, I mean, do 18, Nigerian parties have ideologies? That's I, what I'm I, saying. I, 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 but I, I feel like if we cap it you know, into, okay, these are the three, four, five political parties, then in a way we're forcing their hands you know, to start to have ideologies and guess what the revolution is coming that you talked about yeah but if, if they don't have ideologies they will just go to the same pool of uh, manifesto and pick the same things come and change the english and then present <laughs> to us that's what they have been doing they don't give us a roadmap to achieving whatever they're yeah. doing when you were talking about uk or america and all that they have a national dream they have mm -hmm. a national goal so 
the, the, the importance of having political parties is who are the people who are ready to pass through this route to arrive at our goal, our yeah. national goal? Who are the people who are ready to pass through another route to arrive at that same goal? So if you want Nigeria to develop and you say free education is going to uh, make us develop faster, yeah. we want development. So my party is talking about free education. Another party may be talking about uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. about some other, other things. But it is to arrive at the same goal. But when a Nigerian politician says it's about common interest, no permanent friend, mm. the common interest in their own case is not the common interest of the nation. They're talking about their own common pockets. interest that you, what will benefit you and benefit me, mm. not what will benefit the country. So until our politicians begin to see Nigeria as constituency one, mm. and then every other one is just a secondary constituency, we will not succeed. Yeah. Because they are, they are, my people say, you're fishing into your basket. You, are, mm. you won't only want to fish into your basket. So wherever it favors you, you That's go it. there. We've seen in River State, even if I don't mention names, but we've seen in River State uh, that somebody left a particular party went to another party to contest governorship mm -hmm. and then he lost the governorship and he was expecting ministerial position now maybe this is a conspiracy but i i think in my mind that for that person who left that party to go and contest in another party still having the gods the to, ambition yeah to to expect to be given ministers may have been sent he may have been sent by somebody from this party that mm. he allegedly left mm -hmm. to go and disrupt other parties to make right. sure they don't make a headway and come back and get some some returns yeah that could just be a payment oh i'm so, give, i'm going to give you a slot yeah. for what so you do we've seen a lot of these things happening prior to election maybe a few months to election you just see this one's coming we are going to form up. our own party mm. and all that before you know what is happening they're singing a different tune Okay, we are going to align with this other p political party. Uh, we have adopted. I think we saw uh, that a lot. We've seen all yes. these things. So, I think, like you said, even if it's going to be five, mm -hmm. but it should not be more than ten. Yes. In fact, how do you tell someone who is not really, really well lettered to go and start looking for the political party the that they like? Papers. You know, we need to have such that people can identify easily. If it is three parties, fine. If it is five parties, fine. If it's even ten. But what are you doing with 80 political parties? It doesn't make lot. sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always stood from the point of view of each party, let me know what you stand for. Let me know what your ideologies are. That way I can easily allow... It's easier. It's easier for everyone. The only reason why they want to do this is because they want it... Maybe they want to be able to still, you know, go there and finesse people and then get all that they can for themselves. As long as it benefits themselves. They just copy. It's like our tertiary institutions. Most of them, people write... Um, they write Plagiarism. Uh, yeah, they write, they write projects. Mm. The project is just go select your, your, your topic. topic. Come here, look for any project that, it, that sounds like the one you want. Mm. Change the English and submit. Mm. Yeah. So that's what is happening. They, they give you a manifesto, which once they get into office, they are not... They're not able to keep it. Yeah. They don't keep it. The promises. They don't keep it. A manifesto is a document telling people what you have promised them to do. You have taken an oath to do. And then you're voted into office based on that manifesto. Mm. And you jettison it and tell us mm. that uh, uh, it's not easy to take care of Nigeria, <laughs> except you are a magician. Mm. And all that and all that. I mean, if, it's, if other nations are flourishing, then why, why can't you... You know how your mother would say, the person that took first in class, do they have two heads? Yes. Really, if other nations are flourishing, do they have two heads? I mean, we can just start to put in the work here in Nigeria, but yeah. Um, anyways, I think I don't think Mr. Nick is coming back. We sort of have some technical um, issues. But yes, we were talking to Nick Agule, he's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been talking about the coalition of political parties and Atiko being um, touted to lead the opposition party come 2027. That's why we wrap it up on the short. This week, the first week in January of 2024 has come to an end and we, yeah. we before we Before we go, I um, would like to give you a little information for the people who might be afraid that once the third mainland bridge is closed, you may not be able to move on the road. We've been given more information about that uh, from very early hours of the morning till, till 12 noon. 
uh, traffic is more coming to the island, so the road will be open, the bridge will be open according to information reaching us now. Uh, it will be open till 12 uh, midday and it will be closed at 12 midday. And then the other section from island to uh, going to the mainland will be opened at that time. So hopefully if you're coming from the mainland to the island, you'll have to come before it is 12 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. And then when you're going back, you cannot move earlier than 12 o'clock, except you need to take other routes that will take you to your destination. So the information that we got earlier just told us that they will close yeah, it. Yeah, the over shaky access. So we have this now. We don't know the length of time it will take, uh, whether it will be one month or two months, but we do know that every day you can commute on that road. Uh, but just on you, different lanes. You can time it well. Yeah. Well, like she said, this is where we drop it and we are very, very happy that you were able to stay with us for the entire full first week of uh, 2024. 2024. I can't believe I keep saying that, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> we made it this far, we're yes. going to go even farther than this. We'd like that. to thank you. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We'll see you on Monday. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing weekend.